you know, the U.S. government is huge. It's the largest human organization. There are, I think, then I think there are two million federal employees and another ten million federal contractors. So who are effectively government employees but don't have civil service protection, for example. Um, so that's twelve million people in a country of three hundred and forty million working for the federal government. So it's kind of hard to overstate how big the federal government is and how well funded. And so to say the government this, the government that, no, of course, it's people within the government. Um, but yeah, they're working on all kinds of things, obviously, uh, that are classified. But in general, no, they, they can't control these objects. Uh, so no, it's not American technology. Well, s- or Russian or Chinese. It predates you know, all of that. Well, some of it does, right? Like, for sure, the Kenneth Arnold sightings, that was really early on. That was like the 19, early 1950s. He was seeing these flying saucers, these disks that were moving over mountains. Well, right. I mean, the prophet Ezekiel writes about it right. in the first chapter, Wheels in the Sky. You yeah, know, that's so. a crazy one. Boy, when you well, read Well, it that, is crazy. If you, yeah. if you read it, it's like, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, and... So, and not just, you know, the Hebrew scriptures, like it's all over every... Mm -hmm. The Vedic texts. Of course. Mm -hmm. So these are spiritual phenomena. There's no evidence they're from another planet. I mean, I think that's the op, that's the lie, that they're from Mars. Look, space, the atmosphere is really well monitored, right? Both for military, for defense reasons, but also because like it'd be nice to know when asteroids are coming. And there's no evidence, has never been any evidence, that there are lots of these objects, these vehicles coming into our atmosphere from somewhere else, some other planet. There's no evidence of that at all. Hmm. So they're from here, and they've been here for thousands of years, whatever they are. And um, it's pretty clear to me that they're spiritual entities, whatever that means. They're supernatural, and which is to say supernatural means above the natural, above the observable uh, nature. And... Um, they don't behave according to the laws of science as as measured by people, you know, and um, and they've been here for a long time. And there's a ton of evidence that are under the ocean and under the ground. So, like, with that fact set, what do you conclude? When did you start having this opinion that they, they were spiritual and that they've always been here? Like, when, when did this— Well, I didn't know anything about the topic until 2017— and like, was that after the New York Times piece? No, it was before. It was before. And the things that I saw, I mean, like I was and am still a very conventional person. I mean, I'm 54. I grew up in this country in California, which was like, like every assumption about America I bought completely, just completely. And I thought that everyone who questioned those assumptions was bad. I just bought into the system completely without even thinking about it. And I imagined that I was like some kind of free thinker and, you know, I'm going against the grain. But like the core, my core assumptions were the, you know, the assumptions fed to me by the culture and the government. And I didn't even realize it. But anyway, I'd never really thought about UFOs at all. And I'd been in journalism since I was a kid. So, of course, I'd run into a lot of people who had crazy views on a lot of different topics. UFOs, 9-11, circumcision, you know, like every whack job in the world you run into when you're covering stuff. Fluoride. Fluoride, right? I just brushed with non-fluoride toothpaste this morning. Yeah, me too. Um, <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. But probably unlike you, I didn't have any opinions like that. I was like, fluoride, come on. You know, 9-11, shut up. Yeah. UFOs, you're fucking crazy. You know right, what I mean? I just right. like I had this reflexive. I'm ashamed of it. I'm not bragging about it. But um, but it was it was 2017, and really it was the Trump campaign. It wasn't that I was like so in love with Trump, though I've always liked Trump because you know he's like hilarious and charming and all that. But I wasn't like a Trumper or anything. Um, but it was watching that campaign, and particularly his claim that they were spying on him, and I was like, really, you're not. The, the, the intel services and federal law enforcement, FBI, do not spy on presidential campaigns. Like, that's so out of the realm. That's so crazy. Like, that could never happen because, of course, there's no democracy in a system like that. And fundamentally, we're a democracy, an imperfect one. It kind of lumbers along, you know, but, like, it's not fake. And I, then that turned out to be true. And I, and I knew it was true. And that just blew my mind. So I began a process still ongoing of reassessing a lot of other things like, okay, well, if that was not true, what else is not true? And what else 
that they told me was a conspiracy theory might actually have some basis in fact. And 